Hi guys. Oh, let me erase that. Um, happy Thanksgiving. And this is installment one of the um, population genetics lecture. But first, before I get started, I want to make an announcement. Um, just because we're not in class doesn't mean I don't have announcements. There is a new course that is being taught by Dr. Powell, who normally teaches ecology on um, ecology and evolution of societies. And since he studies ants, he knows all about animal societies. And if you are interested in um, ecology, evolution, organismal biology, that might be a great course for you. I don't know when it's being held. That is not on the flyer. But if you look it up um, on the course schedule, that should tell you. Um, so yeah, okay, moving on. All right, so today we're talking about population genetics. And to start off, I'm gonna start off with a story. So once upon a time, there was a species called the bighorn sheep, and they're not sheep, but they do have big horns. And um, these are these iconic animals of the western mountains and they have these the males engage in this dramatic male combat where they bash their heads together and they even have like air pockets in their skulls to absorb the impact which is a whole nother lecture but they're cool animals but because they were so cool <laughs> that they were hunted <laughs> a lot and um, their habitat was encroached on and then they also had disease outbreaks and so their populations crashed and in order to remedy this and to save the species there were a few of them that were taken airlifted to Banff Canada to um, a refuge there where they would be protected and um, they were doing great there were 12 individuals that started that population and um, they increased their numbers to about 90, and then all of a sudden they crashed back down to half that. And um, in order to, to address this population crash, um, a few more bighorn sheep were airlifted into that refuge, that wildlife refuge, and, um, and now they're doing much better. So, Population genetics is about explaining why that happened. The increase in the crash and, um, and why they're doing much better now with the influx of um, some new individuals from a different population. Um, okay, so what is a population? So a population is basically um, a group of interbreeding, interbreeding individuals. And, um, and another way to look at this from a genetics perspective is that this is um, a gene pool. If you want to boil a population down to the genetics, it's really a collection of alleles. And that's what population genetics looks at. It is focused especially on changes in allele frequencies over time. So what this means is that population genetics is essentially about evolution. Because changes in allele frequency over time, that equals evolution. All right, so at the same time, the unit of evolution also is the population. So populations are the unit of evolution. And um, so individuals don't evolve, species don't evolve, populations are the unit of evolution. Populations are technically the only thing that evolves. Okay. So population genetics is fundamentally about evolution. Okay, so 
It is also about understanding natural variation within populations. Um, and whoops, and uh, variation, genetic variation, phenotypic variation is essential for evolution to happen. So we take this natural variation and we try to understand how it changes over time and what are the forces that are driving that change. So that's about what population genetics is about. Okay, let's, whoops, whoops, okay. So, population genetics, because it's fundamentally about changes in allele frequencies over time, it is not easy to measure directly. And so we use a lot of mathematical modeling to try to understand population genetics and genetic dynamics. Usually what people do when they study population genetics is they infer processes that happened in the past. They're not generally, there are definitely exceptions, and we'll talk about one of them later, but usually people are not studying a population, counting up the allele frequencies, and then the next generation counting up the allele frequencies. They model that instead. So this is just one example of that type of model. We're gonna go through this in more detail and parse it out for you, but I just want to say that population genetics is a lot of math that we are not really going to go into today. We are gonna cover Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and those equations, but they're pretty straightforward. We'll derive them all. Um, and otherwise, I'm just going to gloss over the math for this introductory genetics course. So population genetics is a whole nother course that I would someday love to offer. Um, but for today, we're gonna just kind of cover the basics. Okay, so um, let's start out with measuring genotypic frequencies. So we can quantify genetic variation in a population based on frequencies of the genotypes and frequencies of, of the alleles. So just to review what is a frequency. So frequency means um, the proportion of cases, let's say, um, in, in total. So they're, they're basically a proportion. Um, they are also viewed as a probability. And that'll come up later. All right, and they're typically from zero to one, and they're um, expressed as a decimal. Okay, so when we're talking about genotypic frequencies, um, for example, we've got our frequency, this is what the F means is frequency, of big A, big A is literally the number of big A, big A individuals in the population divided by the size of the population. It's a proportion, it's a percentage, it's a probability. Same for big A, little a, same for little a, little a. All right, so that's where genotypic frequencies come from. That's how they're calculated. We can also do something similar with allele of frequencies. So you can just count up the number of alleles. So um, allele frequencies, you can get them, can be calculate, calcu, calculated from either um, genotypic frequency, genotypic numbers, so numbers of the genotypes, and that's what's going on here, or from genotypic fre frequencies. Okay. Mm, yeah. All right. So. Hmm. Okay, so again, just like with the genotypic frequencies of the number of individuals of that genotype in the population divided by the population size, the, the frequency of alleles, so typically we designate the frequency of um, one allele, let's say the dominant allele with a P, and then the frequency of the second allele assuming we have a two allele locus with a Q, 
and we can count that, we can calculate that as the number of the big A alleles out of the total number of alleles in the population because we're going to be considering a diploid population. Um, it's 2 times n, which is the number of individuals, because each individual has two copies of alleles. Um, all right, so another way to think about this, using the genotypic, the numbers of a certain genotype, is the number of individuals with a big A, big A genotype, plus the number of times 2, that's important, plus the number of individuals with, that are heterozygous. Now what this means is that we are counting for, let's say there's 100 individuals. So let's say um, the number of big A, big A individuals is 100. The number of the little a in individuals is, let's say 70. The number of little a, little a individuals is 30, all right. So the total number of alleles in this population equals 200, because we have 200 individuals, times 2. Let's do times 2 equals 400, OK? So that's going to be that's going to be our number 400 is here. Um, we're going to have 100 individuals times 2, because they each have two big A's. And we'll have 70 individuals just times 1 because they each only have 1, OK? And then we can do that also for um, the Q, which is the frequency of a little a, where we have um, the number of little a alleles divided by 2n, otherwise known as um, the number of homozygous recessive individuals times 2 plus the number of heterozygotes divided by the total number of alleles. OK, so that's calculating allele frequencies based on genotypic numbers. We can also calculate allele frequencies based on the frequency of the genotypes. So what this means, so this is what we've already seen in the last slide. This is also equal to the frequency of big A, big A, plus one half the frequency of big A, little a. And we have this one half here because we have half the number of big A's here as here. So in this case, we it would be 0 0.5. So here P would equal 0 0.5 plus 0.35 times 0 0.35 times 1 half, whatever that is, OK? So that would be your P. OK, now. So um, what I want you guys to do is um, use this example to, um, to calculate the genotypic and allelic frequencies here. So these are blood types, and these are the number of individuals with various blood types, and I want you to calculate in the genotypic and allelic frequencies. And um, you can pause it now and do that. Um, and actually, maybe what I'll do is just end this video here, and then we'll go over the answer for the next one.